Hello everyone and welcome to the first edition of Fisher Football Focused. I am your host Kyle Lumsden and we have a great show in store for you today. This past Saturday the Cardinals opened up their 2014 season with an impressive 36-14 win at home against Otterbein University. Now let's take a look at the highlights. Fisher wasted little time getting on the board as quarterback Tyler Fenty finds wide receiver Bobby Capisi on this 21-yard touchdown reception, giving the Cardinals an early lead. In the second half, with Fisher up a touchdown, Otterbein's Reed Hutchinson would take this end around up the sideline, breaks a tackle, cuts it back towards the middle, and takes it all the way to the house for an 82-yard touchdown run, tying the game up at 14-all. Fisher's defense would step up big as linebacker Mike Donenson would force a safety, giving the Cardinals a 16-14 lead, a lead they would not relinquish, as on the very next possession, Fenty would find Nathan Nagolian on this 45-yard touchdown pass. Nagolian had eight receptions for 148 yards and two touchdowns on the day. Sophomore running back Chris Smith would put this game out of reach, running untouched up the middle for the score, as Fisher ran away with this one, 36-14. Personal foul? Inactive activities on a glorious day. Huh? Let's get out there and play! Sweet. Ooh, freeze! When do I get to be in? Uh-oh. Hey, Reggie, frozen people can't talk. P-L-A. An hour a day. I'm it. There are lots of great play ideas online, but don't stay too long. I'm now joined here on the show with head football coach Paul Vosberg. Coach, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. I'm glad you're here as well. And um, it's, we've talked about how important it is uh, to start a game and, and, and build that momentum. And you guys were able to score on your first drive just three plays in. Um, how important was it um, to gain that momentum early on in your first game? Well, I, I think it was real important um, that our offense uh, showed they could move the ball and score. And I think it gave them confidence later on. Uh, we had a little lull there, but I think they, they knew they could do it because they had already done it. And uh, to do it in three plays was, was right. pretty impressive and, and, and so on. Uh, so we were excited that uh, we could start out the 2014 season with such a nice drive. Yep, and, um, and then Otterbein, uh, they would tie the game off an impressive 82-yard end around. Um, what happened on that play defensively? Uh, well, we got caught inside. Our edge player, you always have an edge player on defense, and he has to turn it in back into his 10 other buddies there, and that didn't happen. He got to the edge, and now we're all chasing it. And uh, uh, he got up the sideline, made one cut back to the middle of the field, and then he was gone. So our pursuit was not real good. The angles were not good. Our kids were hustling on the play, but... Um, even though they were hustling, they, they took poor angles of pursuit and, right. and so on. But it all started with we lost the edge, and, and then we were in a foot race. Um, but your defense did step up as uh, linebacker Mike Donenson, um, who we'll see later in the show. He came up huge forcing that safety. Um, how did this affect your team um, from that point on? Well, I, I think that was the turning point in the game as far as us really taking control of the football game. That. Um, we first got them down there with a real good punt, got them deep in their own end, so the special teams kind of helped there, and then all of a sudden we, the defense comes out and plays the way they've been playing all year long so far, far for us, and get the safety, and now it's now we not only get the two points, but we're going to get the football back. And, and potentially great great field position, yeah, which you would. Yeah. And, and we got great field position, and so that allowed us all of a sudden to go from a, a, a tie ball game and now we're up by eight points and so yeah. on. So it was, it, that was the turning point in the game, no doubt. And then, you know, you, you really stepped on the, on the gas pedal right after that, as you said, um, when, with Nagolian's touchdown. Um, take me through that play and, and, and how that was a, a, a good play. Well, we, once we got the ball back on the punt return and that, uh, we were in great field position. Uh, Coach Kramer called for a play action pass. The protection was outstanding uh, up in there. And if, it, if when you watch the highlight, you're going to see our running back do a great job uh, picking up the defensive end uh, so he doesn't get to Tyler. Tyler's got time. and. Uh, no goalie and got behind the secondary and uh, so that uh, that was a great play for us. Uh, the momentum got swung though again by the safety. Right. Um, what were some, some, some other key highlights in that game that really stood out to you and how you guys really played well as you pulled away um, and scoring you know, 22 unanswered points in that third quarter? Well, it, you can even go a little bit back into the second quarter. I thought one of the key plays was, you know, they were 
uh, they had busted a long run with it seven to seven mm -hmm. and made a long run down the field and our defense came up big um, after giving up a long run they didn't score on but they held them down there and forced a turnover got us the ball back so that was a big play in the first half and then we get the lead and we're ahead 14-7 at halftime um, then and again uh, our defense came up a couple other times big where you know, they had a couple of fourth down stops. Yes. And when you have fourth down stops and third down stops, uh, third in a yard, and you blow them up in the backfield, uh, right. those are momentum changes. So our defense came up with some real big plays that uh, uh, switched the momentum back to us and allowed us to win that game. And now uh, heading into week two, you, you're, well, you're, you're heading into a bye week. Um, how do you feel that you've had, you know, a, an impressive, you know, first, first, first game victory? Um, but now you have to go into a bye week. So what are, you, uh, what are your expectations for this, this coming week? Well, I, I think, first of all, we need to get back to uh, some fundamentals and we need to get some things better. We had a scrimmage game with U of R, showed us some things. And then, of course, this game, uh, a true game, uh, showed us some more things. And so we, we need to get back and get some things better uh, so we don't make the mistakes that we did make here in the opening game. Uh, so that we're better for that next game against Brockport State. Um, I think the other big thing for us, too, is our players really haven't had a day off since uh, August 16th, yeah. uh, being into camp and so on. So uh, this might be a, day, a week for us to get our legs back underneath us, get a little bit fresher. Some guys are a little bit dinged, uh, need to heal up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a couple things that we can accomplish this week uh, uh, in our bye week. And I, you know, going to... Uh your expectations for this season. Um, you know, what, what were you expecting? You had great success last year. You've had you know, tremendous success over the years. Um, what are your expectations heading into this year? Well, I, I think this team can be an outstanding football team. I think there's some really good talent on it. Uh, I think we have some good depth. Uh, I think we have talent on both sides of the ball and with special teams. Uh, but like I always tell the guys, talent alone doesn't win. So you have to have the good team chemistry. You have to have a little bit of luck that you don't get any injuries too, that guys right. don't get stay uh, beat up and yeah. stay healthy. But I do have high expectations for these guys because a lot of the guys were a part of last year's team that got us to the national quarterfinals. And I thought we played extremely well in, in the playoffs last year. Uh, we finished the season extremely strong and uh, hopefully that can carry into this season. So. Yeah, we, we do have a lot of high expectations for our kids. We, we have high expectations just about every year, right. uh, but I think they're very, very high this year. We'll mm -hmm. see what happens. And you feel that, that, that strong leadership then for, from the success you've had in the past, those guys still on the roster, um, those guys would have to play a large part, you think, um, this coming season. Yeah, I think so. And, and I think there's a couple of guys that are back, uh, truthfully, from the 2011 team. They're still on our team. Yeah. Um, and they experienced going to the national quarterfinals that year. I don't think they liked the 2012 season so much because we didn't make the playoffs. We did get a postseason bowl bid, but we didn't right, make the playoffs. Season. And then they get turned around in 2013, get back into the quarterfinals again. And I, and I think that showed them that, okay, we, we need to stay to work if we're going to do what we did in 2011 and 2013. So I think that experience hopefully will help us uh, to keep this team focused and, and working week by week. And do you feel that, you know, it was, you know, still a successful season in 2012, but do you feel like that was, you know, beneficial for your team in a way to look at it as, you know, now we have, we made it, you know, yes, we had an ECAC bowl bid, um, but we have to, this is what we have to do different next season in which you guys, you know, rebounded. What did yeah. you guys do differently, I would say? Well, again, I, I think uh, our kids, uh, they were disappointed in, in 2012 that, they, you know, you shouldn't be disappointed about a bowl bid, right. but, but when your expectations are higher, um, you don't want to settle for less. And, and I think our guys thought that they settled for less uh, uh, in 2012, that they could have been a better football team. So hopefully we, we, we learned last year and said, you know, we, we've got to get better in 2013. They did it. And again, some of those guys are uh, from 2011 and 12 season. They're still playing for us. And right. they're going to carry that into this season and uh, make sure that, uh, you know, we put our best game forward. You know, you can do all the right things. That doesn't always guarantee you success. Right. You get, but you, you have your, your best. Yeah. You have your best chance for success right. when you do all the right things. Mm -hmm. It may or may not happen, but you usually can live with those mm -hmm. those situations. So yep. that's what we talk to our guys about all the time too. Is uh, if you do the right things, you got your best chance to have the most success you should have. Yep, and, and doing the right things, going through the bye week and learning the fundamentals again and, and going through and, and working hard. And uh, you, you guys are ranked number ninth in the nation. 
Um, do you feel any pressure with that ranking? Uh, I try not to get our players to look at that. Mm -hmm. I really don't like to look at it. I, I do a little bit only because I'm a ranker. So, oh. so every week I, I have to put my two cents in there, who's the top teams in the country. And our players probably wouldn't want to know what I rank our team uh, in that. But uh, I, I tell them the most important uh, ranking will come about uh, November 15th, November 16th, after their last regular season game. Yeah. Where are we then? That's when it really yeah. counts. Yeah, and you, and you only can con you control your own destiny, your own fate. Yeah, right. um, so now, uh, September 20th, the Fisher football team will travel to Brockport in its first road test on the season. We'll get into that matchup and much more next week on Fisher Football Focus. I want to thank Coach Vosberg for coming in today. Coming up next, we have linebacker Mike Donaldson and wide receiver Nathan Nagolian in the studio. So stay with us. I present to you Algebra 2. Foreign languages. And finally, biology. Who among you will step up to their challenge? Me. Take on the tough classes now. You need them to prepare for college. So congratulations on your guys and um, winning your f the first game of the season. How important was it for you guys um, to come out strong in your home opener, opener to get the victory? Uh, Mike, we'll start with you. Uh, I mean, it's everything. Uh, you know, coming in the season, we have high expectations for ourselves. Uh, the nation's looking at us. You know, we're, we got to the Elite Eight last year, like everyone knows. And, uh, we want to stay on top. You know, we want to be one of those elite teams, but we also don't want to be one of those teams that's considered as just, um, you know, an elite eight and done. And uh, this is the year we think that we can push through um, into those final four and championship games. And you can't do that without winning your first one. So, you know, we're, uh, off season work got us here, and then we did what we did on Saturday. And Nathan, uh, I thought it was important to set the tone for the season. Uh, I don't know if it was a tone we wanted to set. We came out a little flat so we could have played better. But uh, another important thing to stress is each game is equally as important, whether it's the first game or the last game of the season. Everyone matters. That's right. And, and start with you, Mike. In, in that game um, this, Saturday, this past Saturday, mm -hmm. the score was not up at 14. You guys were looking for that kind of, some kind of spark to get you guys going. And you were able to um, supply that by uh, forcing a Otterbein into a safety. Take me through that play and, um, and how important that was for you guys. Sure. Um, well, you know, coming out on the start of the second half, they, they showed a wildcat formation that we hadn't seen on film or anything in our scouting. So they came out, they ran a jet sweep, and, you know, quite, quite frankly, they just beat us on it. You know, they got outside of us and they took it, I don't know, 80 something yards to the house. And we got back to the sideline, we regrouped. Um, our coaches made a great adjustment. They told me what I'm going to do the next time they run that play. And Two plays later, we're out there, and they run that same formation. And I was able to blitz off the outside and get through, get a hit. And all my teammates came in to make it a pretty awesome safety and give us a, a pickup. And then after that, you guys you, uh, obtained possession, and you were able to score a touchdown pass um, um, from Fenty. So what was, uh, what was that like, um, you know, putting your team on top um, for good, as you guys never really looked back? It was nice. Uh, Football is a huge game of momentum and swings. And uh, like, as Mike said, the defense made a good play. We needed it, put us up uh, two points, and Coach Kramer wanted to capitalize. Um, so we actually ran, ran this play, the first play of the game, and uh, it didn't really work out the way we wanted to. So we came back to it after that. And uh, Tyler starts off front with the line, great blocking. Tyler put the ball where it needed to be, and it was uh, – it was very big for us. And, I don't and you took over from there. Yeah. And you had eight receptions on the game for 148 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, if I had you on my fantasy team, I probably would have done a lot better this weekend. <laughs> um, but how does it feel to be um, Fenty's kind of go-to guy when, uh, when the team is in need of a big play? Uh, it's, it's more than just that. Uh, it's nice having like Mike and uh, Bobby on the outside, too, who can make plays, kind of loosen up defenses. But uh, I mean, me and Tyler, have, we've played together last year, all year. Um, we got a lot of time on the field, obviously, so it's nice having him being able to trust me. Uh, we're usually on the same page. Um, we're always talking, whether it's at practice in the locker room, about different things, different things we see on the field. And uh, he trusts me, I trust him, and that's all we really need, I guess. Yeah, the, you know, the, ke the chemistry 
um, to coincide with that um, is a huge part in that. So, Mike, we're headed into the bye week. Um, what are you guys um, preparing, I guess, as, as, you, as you go through this off week here? Well, like Nathan said, uh, it's one game at a time in the season. And, you know, we, uh, we had a really tough camp this year. We really got after each other. Like I said, we set our standards high. And um, when you're only going against each other for two weeks and you, you like to play at a high caliber, we really got after each other. And then the scrimmage in the first game, uh, I think we all got our first taste of football, and we're, we're happy to be back. And now we get this season to, to I mean, I'm sorry, this week to heal up, um, get ready for this Courage Bowl against Brockport. It's going to be a huge game. Uh, it means so much more, obviously, than just a game because it is a Courage Bowl. But uh, having the bye week, it's nice to be able to rest up, um, you know, fix what mistakes we might have made on Saturday, and have, uh, have some time to get ourselves ready for this game coming up in a week or two weeks now. And uh, speaking of mistakes, Nathan, what are you looking for, you know, as you look over the game film of the last game? But what are the, some of the mistakes that you guys need to fix heading into Brockport's Courage Bowl game? Uh, I know offensively, um, as wide receivers, we have to work on our blocking a little bit. Um, we set the, set the tone or set the edge on the outside earlier in the game, and then we kind of lost it. Um, we want to kind of expand the field. Um, and then there's just some other concepts uh, as an offense and as a group that we need to tighten up, uh, mental mistakes, penalties, um, stuff like that. But uh, we have these two practices. We have two practices this week, Wednesday and Thursday, and uh, I think those will be big for us to kind of get after it. Well, that's good. And um, I want to thank Nathan um, and Mike for joining me today. Um, and rest up, enjoy the bye week, and um, I look forward to uh, having you guys back, out, back on the field week two against Brockport. And next, we have Fisher's Athletic Director, Bob Ward, in the studio to hear on his thoughts on how successful the football program has been over the years and its impact on the college. Big dreams and good grades aren't enough to get into college. There are actual steps you need to take. Finding someone who can help is the first and most important. For the next steps, go to knowhowtogo.org. So the football team this last season has advanced to the quarterfinals of the national championship for the second time in three seasons. Now the Cardinals are ranked number nine in the country in Division Three. How do you feel this success, um, being a part of such a successful program? Yeah, it's been really fun. Um, you know, I went, last year I went down to, flew into Austin and, and uh, drove up to uh, Belton, Texas or something like that. It was interesting. Right. It was freezing down there, but it, the, the whole run has been fun. If I go back to when it started, maybe about 1999, when we built Grounty Stadium, and um, I think we've always said this is it, you know, Paul and, and uh, the football people, if, if I said, if we build it, they will come. And, it, you know, they yeah. did. Once we started to get players, the run has been really amazing as far as, uh, you know, the amount of wins uh, compared to losses and the amount of postseason bids we've had in the last uh, 15 years. It's been great. I mean, and it is fun. It's a, you hate to say it, it's, a, it's kind of one of the um, flagship sports for any college. And, you know, when you can have a good crowd like we had on Saturday, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's really yeah. fun. Yep. And speaking of Grounding Stadium, you see the fans, you know, talking about the crowd and how they, they fill up the seats. How do you feel about, you know, the student support and how much it's influenced the college? Well, it was a beautiful day. Um, it wasn't 90 and it wasn't 50. And it was, I, I think that the, the students at Fisher now appreciate the, the, uh, the atmosphere. It's, it's almost a little bit carnival-like, you know, it's not... Right. Uh, it's not just a football game. I'm not sure everybody that comes to the football game is a big football fan, but I think they like the atmosphere. You get to see people. You get the, right. you know, this week uh, we had a little bit better uh, uh, concession stands. that was run by Zeb's, uh, uh, you know, a, yeah, um, that, a yeah. food company, right? Yeah. So I think we're just trying to make it better and better. We're trying to make it an entertainment thing. It, we know it's Division Three. We know we're not, not going to draw 100,000 people, but uh, we, we think that it's fun also. Right, and I saw a number of alums coming back. And, um, and being a part of 
you know, they miss it. You know, they feel like oh, they got to yeah. see their friends and things like that. So it's nice to, you know, creating an atmosphere like that um, to have people come back. Um, it's, it's nice to see. And, um, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the atmosphere with the pet band. Um, that's been introduced, I believe, uh, at the end of last year. Was that their, their first time playing at Grounding Stadium? Or? That was absolutely their first time playing anywhere. Oh, uh, wow. And we, we have some really uh, great young people. Uh, Gretchen Dykes, who's a, a student here, she's been very gracious to help organize that. And I was really excited. We bought some drums and they had some of their own, uh, you know, uh, brass instruments and we uh, were waiting for a, f a few more things. But I, I, I was excited that it was the first time out and uh, we just lo looked to build on that. Right, and, it, and that, that creates a, a great atmosphere. Hearing the band, it kind of pumps up the crowd a little bit more and that's exactly what you need. And are you going to the Courage Bowl um, on September 20th? Absolutely. The game? There's a luncheon out at Brockport, uh, I think on the 16th or 17th or something like that. Um, Maybe even before, I don't know. But, but uh, I haven't been to Brockport since they've really done a lot of renovation oh, yeah, in the okay. stadium. So I'm, I'm really interested to get out there and, and see what it looks like and to go out and uh, see another Courage Bowl, yeah. hope for another win. Exactly, that's exa exactly. Hopefully start the season 2-0. and yeah. And I want to thank Coach Ward for joining me today. Um, it's been a pleasure, so thank you very much. Um, that's all the time we have for you today. I want to thank all the guests who appear on the show and everyone who tuned in to watch. Hopefully you'll be joining me next week on Fisher Football. My name is Kyle Lumsden, and remember, it isn't the hours you put in, but what you put into those hours. See ya.